in a scene in Salara character says wait 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 i need a drink daru hai kya which is basically writer director prashant neel acknowledging that the story he's telling is so dense and so convoluted that viewers might need to knock back a few to fully process what is going on I love that self awareness salar which means general and refers to prabhas's character deva is basically ugram on steroids prashant takes the kernel of the story from his 2014 debut film and builds a sprawling narrative around it one that spans over a thousand years in film and a punishing 176 minutes in life once again we have a childhood friendship with one friend growing up and working as a mechanic Once again, a woman travels to India against her father's wishes and finds out that she is in fact wanted by several murderous men. And once again, a friend summons the other to help him achieve his grand ambitions. To this, Prashant adds the world building he demonstrated in the KGF series. He creates a rogue state called Khansar. By rogue I mean that it's not on the Indian map and isn't bound by Indian laws instead Khansar runs by its own rules which are written down in a book this is a land of warring tribes the head says we are all violent men they have money power weapons and dozens of henchmen who murder without pausing but incredibly they are all faithful to this rule book they adhere to a ceasefire and then vote like decent citizens on whether to continue it or not which is why this film is called salar part 1 ceasefire khan sar ne calculator rakh ke kuch bhi calculate nahi kar sakte khan sar ab lal hoga salar is only prashant's fourth film but the director has established his preferred tropes the main being the son whose actions are micromanaged by his mother Deva like Rocky in the KGF series or Agastya in Ugram will not go against his mother's wishes he will only raise his mighty biceps to fight injustice once his mother has given him permission like Atli Prashant is also a lover of the back story so like in KGF a part of this film is also framed as a story being told by one character to another working with cinematographer bhuvan gauda prashant again creates a monochromatic world in hues of blacks and grays a coal mine plays a starring role and of course his signature non-linear intercutting storytelling style stays in place as does the extensive use of slow motion and ravi basrur's thundering music The BGM elevates the high decibel narrative to even higher. Prashant is a self-professed fan of the Bachchan films of the 1970s and the way in which basic human emotions can make for larger than life drama. His creative genes don't include the strand for subtlety. Salar alternates between elevated notes and even more elevated notes. Characters literally shake because they're so possessed by their feelings. Ishwari Rao who also plays the beleaguered mother in KGF2 is so grim as Deva's mother that it borders on comical. Everyone proclaims rather than speaks, every beat is dialed up to 11. But here's the thing. Prashant pulls it off. In interviews he often says that he's in the movies for money. But I think that means that he's invested in telling his stories to the widest audience possible. Salar is much too long and very exhausting, but it's never lazy. Prashant who's also written the story keeps adding twists and flourishes and more exposition. There are long stretches when the film becomes tedious especially in the second half. But then Prashant grabs the momentum by bunging in an action sequence staged with such a skilled mix of elaborate choreography and emotion that you have to applaud. There is one in which Deva becomes this godlike figure which is just staggering. Prashant also gives Prabhas his groove back. Post Bahubali the actor has sleepwalked through sloppy films like Saho and Radhe Shyam but here Prashant puts Prabhas's granite body language and his understated manner to great use Deva doesn't have the swag or style of Rocky Bhai there are no tailored suits on display his strength is quieter more blunt in fact through the film Deva keeps holding back and that weight only makes his eventual explosion so much more pleasurable to watch Prithviraj Sukumaran as the best friend Vardhiraja brings acting chops and heft to the role there is this bit in which Deva teases Vardhiraja about not being able to bludgeon more men and then both get into this sort of murdering contest the killing veers into cartoonish but their camaraderie is terrific 
And it's lovely that Prithviraj, who is a major star, isn't squeamish about being Prabhas's support in terms of the narrative. This is a world high on testosterone and the women mostly alternate between being Mother India style mythic figures or bait for the villains. Shruti Hassan spends a lot of the little screen time she has waiting to be rescued or listening to the story of her rescuer. I also wish the supporting characters had more flesh on them. Jagapati Babu is solid as one of Kansar's key power players, but the others have little impact. One of the many heads of the tribes actually plots revenge by nurturing this army of drug addicts who will bite a man to death. At one point, they're all attacking like zombies. It's moments like this where Salar seems to be pushing the limits of suspension of disbelief. Obviously, you aren't meant to ask too many questions or look too hard for logic. The chronology moves from 1985 to 2017, but there are also references to ancient times. At one point, mercenaries from Serbia and Sudan make an appearance. Kansar seems medieval in its moors, but it also has its own flight schedule. Essentially, this is Prashant's world and it works to his rationale. Is Salar over the top? Yes, unapologetically so. Is it confusing? Yes. This is one of those films that should have come with its own kunji, you know, those guidebooks for dummies. But will I be back for part two? Absolutely. You can watch Salar at a theater near you. And if you like this review, do subscribe to Reviews and More.